Okay, good evening. Shall we start? Yes, I can start. Okay. So, the slide is visible to everyone? Everybody? I hope it's visible to everyone. My slide is visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So, this was a slide we stopped last time, isn't it? I think this was a slide that we stopped last time. Measure face. Okay. So we we started uh, the defined phase of Six Sigma, and we said, what are the things that we do in a defined phase? We make a project charter. We define the problem. Then, uh, what are the things we is required in the project charter? Somebody please, in the project charter. Business case. Very good. Pro problem statement, goal Very good. statement. Yes, mission statement, goal statement or mission statement, good. Then team then members. Team members, schedule, isn't it? Yes. And we have SIPOC also, supplier input, process output, customer SIPOC. And this much information is are the minimum required for the project charter. So once a project chart is defined, we know what is the problem, what is that we have to improve, then we know about the CTQs and also, then we come to the measure phase. So in the measure phase, what are the things we are doing in the measure phase? Process mapping. Very good, process mapping, as is process mapping, and then we identify what are the CTPs, isn't it? CTQ and CTP you understood. We have taken an example of PISA making in a PISA in your home. Okay, so we understood what is the normal process, input process, and uh, you know, uh, output and customer, etc. And then uh, we and identified how to define a CTQ in a proper, specific manner, isn't it? Like uh, if customer is asking for a PISA, then what is the temperature that we need? Then uh, what is the baking time? So you understood everything. CTP, CTQ, everything you have understood properly, isn't it? Now, then we have stopped in this slide that uh, this is all about Six Sigma. Sir. So your voice is muted. Now, hello. I don't know how it was muted. Okay. Anyway, uh, so you understood? So we this is CTP, CTQs. Uh, so CTQs, we identify the CTQs in a specific way. And then we find out if there is any problem in the CTQ. Uh, any deviation in the CTQ, any variation in the CTQ. It is because of your process parameter and inputs. So we will find out what are those most important CTQs. So we do a brainstorming for that, isn't it? We do a brainstorming and find out what are those important CTPs. And then Six Sigma is all about finding out the relationship between CTQ and CTP. Okay. So we will learn it step by step. Okay. Now let us proceed. So we understood in the measure phase, what are the activities that we have to do? First is uh, understand the proper process map, as is process map. Then we are uh, identifying the CTP, CTQs, etc. Then we are going for a data collection. We are collecting the data for CTPs and CTQs. And then 
in measure phase what we are going to do we are going to uh, analyze things once we got the measurement then uh, then we are going to do the analysis phase okay so but before that we need to ensure that our data collected is error free so let us just understand one more concept called so ctp and ctp is example we have given how ctq will become there, is, there should be a description there should be a target a metric etc okay right now we are going to understand what is measurement system analysis so in this measurement system analysis we are going to study gauge r and r then how to use a gauge r and r in the mini tab etc now objective now we know that objective of a measure, measure phase is to identify the critical output and input using process knowledge. We also call it that KPOV, E process output variable. This is nothing but the CTQ or we call it as Y. Then key process input variable, these are the CTPs or access. So after identifying these two, we need to define a data collection plan. Then we need to collect data to measure the current performance of the process. But before we start measuring, we need to validate whether measurement system is capable of generating accurate data. See, measurement system, when you say system, what are the parts of system? What are the parts of systems? Process. Uh, yes, okay. And now let me tell you, uh, system, I think that day I have explained to you about the system. A system means it is set of elements grouped together to give an output. That means when you say computer as a system, what are the elements? Like CPU is one element, the monitor is one element, keyboard, mouse, etc. These all these elements have been grouped in such a way that you give an input, it will give you an output. If you give the input in keyboard, the output will be in the monitor or the printer like that. So it's that's why it's called system. So similarly, in a measurement system also, there must be some elements, components of that system. So what are the three components of the system? The measurement system comprises of the person who is taking the measurement. Then the gauge with which we are taking the measurement. And third one is the part itself. So these are the three things of three elements of the three components of the measurement system. So you, you heard about 5Ms or 6Ms? Did we discuss that? Different sources of variation? You heard about 5M? What is 5M? Man, so, material, method, methodology. Method machine. You heard about that? 5M yes, sometimes the, we call also 6 The terms in the fishbone diagram, right? Yes, yes. So we uh, we we did we they learn it. sometimes we call six M also mother environment is also a so any kind of variation is happening maybe uh, this variation can be classified into this if your product for example we talked about example of visa that day suppose you are running a visa delivery center and if you are not able to deliver it on time those reasons for that can be classified into different way we can say delivery boy is not delivering it properly so delivery boy comes under man now we can say machine breakdown that delivery uh, boys uh, the, the bike were uh, got unserviceable so that reason comes under the machine so any kind of uh, you know deviation happening in your process you can tell that it, this all because of these five major points five major things or six major things and measurement is one such thing your variation can also happen because of measurement if you don't know how to take a measurement proper measurement then the main source of variation is the measurement itself so we are finding in six sigma we are finding the causes of variation isn't it causes of variation so Measurement can be one cause for variation. Now we want to ensure that whatever data we are collecting, that we can rely on that data. So we want to verify it that our measurement system is okay or not. This is very, very important. You know, whenever we are using a manual kind of 
we're measuring instruments. It is very, very important that you should conduct a measurement system analysis. I will give you an example. Very long back, one famous company, they were supplying, this is a real story, the real case. A very famous company, they were supplying piston rings to GM, General Motors. They were exporting it. And they found that they are not meeting the quality parameters. Internal inspections, they found that they are not meeting the quality parameters. Now, they did everything, everything to uh, you know, uh, stop that problem. And they found that, OK, let us improve the uh, quality, etc. They have done a lot of improvements, but nothing worked. Finally, you know, what happened, actually, it was because they were not able to take a proper measurements. The measurements taken by the people, the variation was the measurement. Actually, the piston ring was OK. Even though the string was OK, they were rejecting it because the wrong measurement taken by the people. So first of all, you have to ensure that in Six Sigma, before going to analysis phase, that the measurement taken by my system is OK or not. Now, if you are into auto industry, we are going to, you are going to be in a chemical industry. Now, if anyone is going to an auto industry, you will understand in auto industry, this MSA is conducted regularly. And if if you are a supplier to uh, Tata, you are a supplier to Toyota, you are a supplier to Maridi, regular basis, you have to send this MSA to them. Every week, you may have to send the MSA to them, OEM, that yes, my MSA is good, MSA is good. You have to give this to your OEM. So that is how the measurement system happens. And measurement system is very, very important just to ensure that all your measurement system is perfect, that any data taken from your measurement system is reliable or not. Now, let us understand how to conduct a measurement system analysis. OK? Because in measure phase, we are going to generate, uh, we are going to measure. So and this measurement data we are going to use to uh, analyze in the analysis phase. So we should be, you know, um, you know, we should know that we can rely on this data. Understood? Now let's see how we are going to do a measurement system. As I said, what are the parts of the measurement system? The operator who is measuring the, measuring that part. The gauge or equipment used for measurement, and then the part used for measuring. Now, there are two major issues of a measurement system. It's called repeatability, reproducibility. And together in MSA, we are calling it as gauge R and R, repeatability and reproducibility. Now, what is repeatability and what is reproducibility? You have any idea? Yes, sir. like if we uh, measure under the same in, uh, conditions of measurement repeatedly, it is called, if it gives the same output, it is repeatability. Very good. And reproducibility is under, if the observer changes or any of the conditions change, uh, it is called reproducibility. Very good. Absolutely right. So you are aware about this, you know? Okay. Now, when you call, say, when the same equipment and same person, same part is measured and you are able to repeat the result. It's called repeatability. You have good repeatability. And if different operator using the same gauge and part is measuring, then it's called reproduce. So in gauge and R, we are ensuring that we are able to repeat and reproduce our measurements. Okay. This is what we are. Now, uh, let's understand that in a better way. So now, how will we conduct it? Okay. So to conduct an MSA, we are going to select three operator and 10 different parts. So then we will get at least two or three measurements. Each. So let us, let's understand. So reproducibility is variation in the average measurement taken by the different operators while using same gauge to measure same piece in product. Variation due to operator. Now here is variation due to gauge. OK. Variation in measurement between uh, measurement obtained when an operator measures the same dimension of same part several times using the same instrument is called as repeatability. Repeatability. Right, right. So let us see. See, to conduct MSA, what is that we are doing is we will uh, select three operators. Okay. Now, three operators we are selecting. Now, we select three operators. Now, we select then 10 different parts. 
Okay. Now, 10 different parts we will select. Now, it is said that we should take this parts totally different, very different. You should take similar products. You should not take similar product or similar measurements. Okay. Now, if one operator takes the 10 measurement, we got total 10 measurements, isn't it? Now, same thing will be done by the other person and other person. So, we got 10 parts, 3 operated, 10 parts and 30 measurements. Now, you know that a measurement taken by this person and measurement taken by this person, there will be variation, isn't it? There will be variation even in micros, there will be a variation. Now, that is one thing. So, we have 3 operators, 10 parts, 30 measurements. Now, if you repeat this 2 or 3 times, we get 60 or 90 measurements. Okay. Now, let's see. So, one, the same part is measured by same operator 3 times. Now, even this also, they will have variation. The person who is measuring now, you just suppose you give this part again after so many measurement of this, the same person will make a variation here also. It's not exactly you will be taking same measurement every time. Until if you are giving it three times same time, they will even put the same measurement. You should not give it like that. I will tell you in mini tab how to do that. Then you have the second person measuring 31 and the third person measuring. Now, see the three operators, 10 parts. It's mistakenly written 10 operators. It's three operator, 10 parts, and 90 measurements. Isn't it? We got 90 measurements. Now, let's see what are these repeatable. See, uh, there are three kinds of variations happening. How? One is part to part variation. Now, tell me part to part variation has to be there or not. Yes, sir. Yes. Why? Because we are taking different parts. See, this is the thing. You are going to take parts totally different from each other as far as possible. So that there is no near to you know, uh, measurements here. So part to part variation is the first thing. Part to part variation and that has to be there. And the second variation is there between the same measurement taken by the same operator. This is repeatability. The variation between this. Okay. And the third one is variation between the operator, the mean 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 measurement between the various operators. That is the third one. Okay, variation in the average measurement taken by the one. So we have three three things. You now part to part variation, variation because of reproducibility, and variation because of repeatability. Now we will get 60 or 90 measurements, part to part variation, it must be there as each part is different. Repeatability, reproducibility variation, same as operator. Okay. Now, how will you analyze it? Now, gauge R and R variation to the total variation is, is less than 40%, 14%. Now, this is not the condition. Now you can change it and you can take it as 10%. Earlier it was 14%. Now industry standard is 10%. Your total gauge R and R variation should not be more than 10%. It should be less than 10%. Okay. And uh, how will you analyze it in mini tab? So, before that, let me take you for a planning of how we can plan for a uh, MSA. So that day I have explained you what is mini tabs, uh, different um, you know window session window and uh, um, worksheet window etc. Okay. Now you want to make a plan for the uh, worksheet. Now how will you conduct an MSA practically? Let us understand that. I'll go to Stat Quality Tools. Then gauge study and then create gauge R and R worksheet. Now, this is one thing we do for creating a wage. Amount. For example, you are going in a company now, uh, your OEM is uh, you know uh, asking you a measurement system analysis from your company. You are supplying to a government or maybe a big company, and uh, they want that your measurement system is perfect to ensure that you are. So they asked you a 
thing. So now then what you'll do, you can take a, uh, you can conduct a gauge R and R study. Now in this gauge R and R study, we'll create this creating gauge R and R worksheet. Now open this. Now normally it is conducted in 10 parts. So you are given 10 parts. If you want to give the names of the part, you can give here. You can change the names. Otherwise it can be just part number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now here, if you want to change the, now you can select the part is 10, then operators are three. It's by default it is there. Now you can change it. Now you see this operator name, suppose Sandosh. Now you are going to take three operators, Sandosh, Praveen, Sunil, for example. You have three people. Now what you will do, you will uh, put their name like this and you know three operators so 10 parts three operators you gave the name of the operators now how many replications now if you want to repeat this two times or three times normally it's up to you if you have time you can take three otherwise two two or three is minimum two minimum you have to do okay now I bring, suppose i did uh, three times that means how many measurement sheet it will get we'll get 90 measurement sheets, isn't it? 90 of the rows we'll get. Now click OK. Now what is the use of this? It's very simple. Uh, when you are going to conduct a minute uh, exercise for MSA, you need to call people randomly. Now you have to make a random file because you cannot call Sandosh and give uh, this one part and ask him to take three measurements. Then what will happen? He knows what is the measurement and he will always give the same measurement. Then it will not come. So you should be calling them randomly. So how will you get a worksheet? So we need to have, you know, helps you to get a worksheet for that. Now, what you will do, you just click OK. Now see this. <clears throat> what you have to do is, now you I will take a measurement and then you can write it as measurement. Okay. And in the measurement, what you will do, you will call Sandosh first. And then you will give Sandosh the part, eighth part. And suppose that eighth part is measurement is this, 12.5. So Sandosh will give it like this. Now you will give the Sandosh the third part. And he will measure and give it. You have to um, you know, know for which device. You know that device also, what is that device you're doing. Now then, ninth part. And part this way. So you don't have to plan anything. Already Minitab gives a random run order. In first run, you take give call um, uh, part number eight to Sandosh. Similarly, in the third, 40 second run is you give the second part to Praveen. Likewise. So it is a random. They cannot remember because once he is taking this part, eight part, now Sandosh is going to come and give the eighth part in this here. After 37 experiment, by the time he forgets it, what is the measurement I have put? Okay, so this way randomly you can do. Now what will happen? You will get a measurement that is like this 90 measurements, and then we can analyze it in mini tab. Now let's take an example. I will just show you that we'll open a mini tab practice sessions. Just a minute. Now in the measure phase we have a. Uh, Okay, now this is the MSA. So similarly, there was two MSA conducted by one, one factory. This is, uh, I've conducted this in, during my projects in the early in 2007 and all. So this was uh, done in an Indian Air Force. We have done in Indian, Indian Air Force for a, with a, a micrometer and a four gauge. So now what you will do, you will uh, select it and then we will uh, uh, analyze it. Now, how will you analyze this? Now, similarly, we have got a, a random, randomly uh, given the parts, operator sample, operator and parts. Okay. Now, this we will analyze it. Now, how will analyze? We'll go to stat, quality tools, now gauge R and R. Now, just gauge R and R study crossed. Now here, when you click the Minita, Minita will ask him what is the part number. Now we'll give which column contains the part number, which column contains the operator, which column contains the measurement. Then we'll click OK.
then Minitab will give the output. Now see. Now there are certain things here, F, E and all this, all these things will be, uh, no, you will know it in uh, green belt and black belt. And now let us uh, uh, understand how to analyze the uh, mini tab with the help of uh, graph and uh, the MSA with the help of graph and person study variation. See, what we have to analyze is we are going to analyze this in here, the person day study variation. So the person day study variation is the thing that you are going to send. Now here it is written total gauge R and R person day study variation is 15.57. Now, at that time, it was acceptable. Now, it is not acceptable. It is acceptable less, less than 10%. So, percentage steady gauge, this is called total gauge R&R. Now, total gauge R&R uh, consists of what? Repeatability and reproducibility. So, if you see this together, this is the variation. You know, together variation, 15.57. Now, if you see part-to-part -part variation is 98.78. Okay, out of the total variation, part to part variation is 98.78. Now see this graph. This is written the part to part variation. If you see, the most of the variation is due to what? Due to what? 98% of the variation is due to what? Part to part. Part only. Now, this is not an issue at all because part to part variation, every part is different, so you will get different measurements. So, there is no problem for this. Part to part variation is acceptable. Now, then what you will see gauge around our total gauge around this should be less than 10% of the total, okay, which you will come to here. Now, this is not less than 10%, this is more than 10%, okay. Now that means in, at the present scenario, we cannot, we can say this measurement system is not reliable. We have to find uh, and we have to correct it. Then only we can rely on this measurement system. So the gauge R and R should be less than per 10 percent. And then you will come to know out of this gauge R and R, which is causing the thing. Is it repeatability or reproducibility? Tell me here, which is causing more? The total gauge R and R, which is more? Repeatability or reproducibility? Repeatability is more. Repeatability. That means we are not able to repeat the result. Now tell me, when you say repeatability, who is at fault? Is it is gauge at fault or operator at fault? Operate, operator fault. Sorry. You understood reproducibility and repeatability well. When you say you are you have a problem in repeatability, that means your gauge is not perfect. The operator is fine. If reproducibility is more, then we can say reproducibility, the variation because of reproducibility more, then we can say that. Operator, it's not repeatability high. It is means the percentage is high. It, out of the total government, repeatability percentage is high. That means we are less repeatable. We are not able to repeat the result. We are able to reproduce it. We are not able to repeat it. See, here, and the total gauge R and R is 15.57, but reproducibility is out of it, 15.43 is reproducibility itself. And this is so repeatability itself. That means the variation is caused by repeatability. That means the repeat, we are not able to repeat it. That means our gauge is something, some problem with gauge. Our operators are okay. Operators variation, variation because of operator is permissible. But operator because of the variation because of the gauge is showing more. More variation by, by gauge. So here we will see whether we will see check the variation gauge and we can do for a calibration of the gauge, etc. There is a calibration, proper calibration. The gauges itself, 
is a uh, no huge it's a huge area big area calibration there is a chain of calibration like you have any uh, like in a uh, uh, private institute they don't follow it properly but in a government institute as in air force and all there is a total chain of uh, lab laboratories first there will be a calibration center in the air force itself and we have a uh, calibration center called matkal you know where a complete aircraft is fitted with the calibration uh, items and uh, it comes to a particular station and take the gauges and check the calibration and this all these gauges are checked by national physical laboratory npl there are standards kept and from there and they are tracing it from some germany there are headquarters in germany so there are complete traceability of uh, the calibration in measuring instruments and when when you have more you know serious or uh, serious um, uh, measurements required the calibration standards will become more stringent stringent and then audit for the calibration also will become very okay so this way it is analyzed okay so we will not go into detail this is enough for your um, uh, yellow belt more detail will go in the uh, green belt and black belt okay so i just wanted to show Uh, how it is done gauge r and r what is gauge r and r how it is done etc now what is the purpose of the gauge r and r etc that was my purpose of showing this okay so what is that now let's see this is how it is done in the mini tab and then uh, we just analyze it session window we are going to analyze both session window and this one so here percentage steady variation is a thing that we are going to analyze in the session window yes one more thing there is another thing there are two conditions for acceptance one is your percentage steady variation for total gauge r and r percentage steady variation for the total gauge r and r should be less than 10% that is one condition second condition is your ndc is more than 5 What is this NDC? What do you understand by NDC? If NDC is less than five, what does that mean? Any idea? Okay. Now, MSA is conducted, planned in a proper way. Like we are going to take ten parts. three operators and one gauge isn't it now suppose you are you have taken a parts which are very close to each other the parts itself is very close to each other in that case what will happen mini tab cannot distinguish here the is it is a part to part variation or a gauge r and r variation mini tab will be confused Minute tab one, we want not only minute tab. Even if you are doing it and by manually calculating manually, we'll be confused whether this this variation is because of part to part or other things. So there should be a very clear difference of the measurements. So NDC will tell you the number of distinct category is more than five. We should have more than five. Sometimes it goes six hundred, seven hundred also. But the condition is you should it should be number of distinct categories should be. More than five. Understood? So two conditions to accept MSA. Now, what do you mean if we these two conditions are met? Then what will we say about this measurement system? What can we say about this measurement system then? We can say this measurement system is validated. that means the measurement taken from this system we can rely on the measurements taken from this system okay so now we can proceed with the measurement and the measure phase and then we can do analysis phase because if we are not able to validate our own measurement system and you get a wrong data you, you are getting a wrong measurement system measurement measurement and when you take it to the analysis phase you will get a wrong analysis am i right or not 
so before collecting data before collecting the measurements you are ensuring that you are your measurement system is perfect this is the purpose of msa now this is called a uh, measurement system of variables now there is a measurement system of attributes because everything cannot be in a measurable okay so in that case measurement system of attribute means somebody is uh, visually if you are inspecting something visually for example the color grade the printing quality of a fabric that is checked by visually by expert people now tea tasters have you heard about this tea tasters they are the person who tell the quality about the tea leaves they are there are people who taste the tea and then they said okay this this leaf is good they like can Uh, you know, um, uh, by this leaves. Likewise, tea tasters. Now, tea tasters. There is no measurement that is subject to person to person. If uh, they want to, somebody is testing and uh, we are we are we are taking two people, and if you show to them, they will one somebody will give you one one taste uh, one opinion, another will give another opinion. In that case, how will you do a measurement system analysis? that is then you will do an attribute analysis attribute agreement analysis they are called attribute agreement analysis suppose one more thing you you have you have taken an x ray or a uh, ct scan now the same ct scan you take to different doctors or different radiologists you take so just if you want to test an uh, test it just test it take an x ray and take to three different people all three different people will give three different opinion most of the time you will never find a same same kind of thing from this it happened somebody did a research on this somebody did a research on this they have they have shown the same x ray uh, to to different doctors radiologists etc and there were you know lot of variation it happens so measurement and a measurement variation can happen so we should ensure that whether this is this measurement system is acceptable or not so these are the two things i'll just show you one more thing about uh, this uh, uh, just a minute i mean it have attribute agreement analysis just a minute so in the mini tab itself there is a column called stat uh, quality tools gate study Not get ready. Here you see attribute agreement analysis. Now this again it will be taught to you in green belt or black belt. Okay, so let's let's proceed with this. So any doubt so far? You want to ask any doubt so far? Sir, can you explain the distinct categories once more? See if you are. uh i said there are three things isn't it like one is part and other one is operator and gate okay now see this this is what the first thing you know oh, see see this graph see now this is part to part variation and this are the variation because of age r and r repeatable the amplification now why we have in the first time uh, when we are planning for this msa i said we should take totally different parts you remember this i said here when you are selecting this you are selecting 10 parts i said select totally different part as far as possible now this measurement and this measurement should be different there should be a huge variation as far as possible similarly all these ten parts if you take this way automatically your number of distinct category will be more than 5 suppose you select this and you select another part which is very close to this measurement what will happen many tab will not the, the, the statistics and uh, you know when you calculate we cannot distinguish between these parts so there should be a clear distinction because part to part variation we are making it deliberately because we are finding out total variation and then what is the contribution of total variation in gauge r and r 
what is the gauge r and r contribution in total contribution total variation so out of the total variation gauge r and r contribution should be very less that means less than 10% means the variation because of the operator and variation because of the gauge should be minimum and more the part to part variation so if you are not selected it properly then your ndc will come less than 5 so that means that also will cause you to reject it you have to take it now if your ndc is less than 5 that means what does it mean you have not selected the part for properly so select the part again with the different measurements and do the uh, msa again okay sir okay yes sir thank okay. you now anybody else any doubt understood anybody want to share anything discuss anything So we can proceed now. Proceed. Shall I? I think you are all. You all have come. You no, know, somebody is pressure has pressured you to come for this. Is it like that, or you are coming with interest? So my mic is off. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So shall I? Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Hello. Shall I proceed? I am not able to hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay now next is once we understood that our measurement system is good we can rely on this measurement system the next step is planning for data collection that means why we are planning for the data collection because we we found that there is some problem in our area process and then we are uh, uh, we want to find the causes of it and then you would like to take measurements so that i can analyze now before going to this let me show you some real uh, real case project okay then you will understand just a minute now i said this is a project done by some you uh, know uh, a dialysis uh, chain in one of the states uh, they have a problem like let's understand this i have shared to you i have shown to you uh, that day i think so let's see what was their problem see their problem was they have defined phase what have they defined their problem was it's like something dialysis inadequacy they call it dialysis inadequacy and uh, mortality rate this was their problem you know now see the problem statement the problem description kt over v is the measure of patient hemodialysis adequacy determined by edemia an integral component of hemodialysis machine now the problem was based on the, the see the problem statement based on the six months minimum kt over v value for patient to achieve is 1 they were achieving only 1.2 whereas that the that the best measure is 1.5 if you are able to achieve 1.5 that is the best measure but they were not able to achieve it they were able to achieve only 1.2 and this is affecting their mortality rate etc so this is the measure that they want to achieve but they are not achieving that means there is a variation isn't it now they want to take it as a project to solve this issue now what is the next step they have made the project chart uh, define and uh, you know by identify the ctq etc everything and then they made the proper defined phase project chart and schedule etc and uh, then they came to the measure phase now in the measure phase 
they understood, as I said, the measure phase, the first thing is to identify the process flow map. So, uh, they have identified the process flow map, like what are the different process steps they follow. And then, then they cleared the CTQ. In CTQ, what is that CTQ they want to improve? CTQ is, description is, it is called um, uh, uh, dialysis inadequacy. It's called dialysis adequacy measure. And that is a description. And what is the target? And the, the metric is KT over V is the metric. And what is the target? Target is 1.5. See how they are defined in CTQ, in the description of CTQ, then metric, and then target. Now, once they identify this is their problem, they will see what are the reasons for it. So in the measure phase, what are you doing? You, le you are learning about the process flow map. Then you are learning, you are defining the CTP properly. Then you define the CTP also properly. Now, what is the CTP? CTP means nothing but the causes. Why I am not able to meet that 1.5 KT over V. So CTP is a technical name given to it, but actually these are called the causes, the causes of variation. Now, how will you identify the causes? First thing is you are working in that same place for more than two years, three years at the same place. And if you want to identify the causes, so your process knowledge will help you. So similarly, there is a team for four or five people in that group, then they will uh, brainstorm, yes, what could be the process? Then they know that these are the process. See, causes. What are the causes? See, the dialysis adequacy cannot meet the margin if your blood flow rate is one of the causes. Now, these are all just mere statements, isn't it? Now, we need to convert this CTP into a proper CTP with metric and measurement. So, the blood flow rate is one reason. Dialysis duration is one reason. Dialysis frequency is one reason. Dialysis surface area is one reason that they have to find. Then patient's vascular access condition is one reason. Patient's compliance to UF is one reason. Proper cannulation by center staffs. Proper body weight measurement by center staffs. Regular patients by by tests. When they found that these are the causes that these, if you are not following this properly, then it can affect our dialysis adequacy. Now, how, where did you get this? Because they have the process knowledge. They know they are doctors. They know these are the areas. Now, these are the things that we should take care. Now, what you will do? You will see whether these things are done, are followed or not. That way they do it. Okay. Now, this is CTP means causes. So, in the measure phase, what we do? We did a, uh, how it is done. How, what are the causes? Okay. Then, We'll make it and now more more CTPs like dialysis service area, reuse, needle size, regular estimated calibration, regular waiting state calibration, etc. So these are the causes. Now they have to find. There are around uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9 plus 12, and almost 16 causes they have identified. Now they need to take measurement for this. What are the measures? No, then we are, they have to plan for the data collection plan. Now, data collection plan, they say, now, how it is written, see, a BFR, blood flow rate, data type is variable, size 64, how collected, by whom. So, this is how a good data collection plan is all about. Now, what is this V? What do you understand by V? And here A, what is this? V and A. Okay, V and A means variable and attribute. So some data can be, some CTP can be variable data type and some can be attribute data type. So we made a data collection plan and then accordingly they take the, uh, take the measurement and then they will see how it is distributed. Is it distributed normally? Histogram, they will see. Is it the left peak? Go to an histogram, then they will find out mean, standard deviation, etc. for that. Okay. And then uh, they will see different process capability. These are my target and how much is going away from it. So all these things will be done 
later. Okay, but we need to collect data. First is data collection plan, and then once you get the data, put that data into mini tab and analyze it. Okay, clear? Right. Now let's go again back to the theory. So, what are the things we need planning for data collection? We need a data collection plan. And we also have to know what is data, classification of data, data and information. So today we are going to learn all these things. Okay. Hello. I'm not getting any response today. Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. We want a five minutes discussion. Nobody is answering. What happened today? Last two weeks was very good. Last two weeks were good. Hello. Shall I proceed? Yes. Okay. Okay. So data collection plan, then what is data classification of data, etc. We'll let's understand. So data collection plan, I said that. I have shown how a data collection is plan is done. So what are the things you need in a data collection plan? You have to define what is CTU, then what is the data type and size, who will collect, where will collect. And you make this, it's a, going to be a data collection plan. Now, but let us also understand what is data. Data is the record of actual observation. For example, for a cricketer, it means runs, average, wickets, etc. A quality team, for a quality team, it means rejection, rate, rebirth, output, specification, etc. For a manufacturer, it can be a sales figure, output, stock, etc. So they are all the record of actual observation. So data and facts are the backbone for every Six Sigma project. Data is very, very important in every quality improvement, any kind of quality activities. Okay. So without facts, problem solving efforts are just reduced to guessing game. Chances of success are flow. Okay. Now let us understand the type of data. For example, let's take four, four scenario. You are in a manufacturing unit and uh, there are certain products where you want to check the quality parameters. So it is, for example, it's a camshaft for automobile engineering for suppose. And the output, if I want to check the output, output will come something like this, no? like 19.1, 18.5, 17.9, etc. Now, let us take another example where you are a manager in a TSR hotel and interested in number of just checked in per day. Outcome of five days can be it is like 100 people in one day, second day it is 110 people, third day it is 90, another day it is 104, and another day is 95. Now let's take one more scenario. You're a customer relations manager at a telecom company and you need to measure their customer satisfaction level. And if you conduct a uh, the survey, what is the output that you're going to get? People will rate you accordingly, poor, average, good, call it good, etc. Now, if you are a government official, now in 2021, uh, uh, this census is going to happen. So every 10 years. So if you're a government official and required to conduct a survey of census for marital status in a district, what could be the output of the survey? It could be single, married, divorced, whatever. Now tell me, what is the difference between first two and the last two? First two are data type. Variable and attribute data. First Very and last two means Plus two are quantitative, isn't it? They are quantitative. There are numbers in that. And the last two are qualitative. It's categorical. There is no number. There is category. Am I right? So these are the these are the four types of data that you are going to get every time. Now tell me what is the difference between one and two? So the second one are only whole numbers, but the first one is uh, decimal. It includes decimals as well. Yes. Now, when you take a measurement of product, it can happen in decimals. 
but when you take some number of guests for example if i ask how many people are present in this in this webinar or this session so you can say 120 maybe 100 130 it can never be 120.5 or it can never be 121.2 it's a complete number integer okay there is no fractional value happening so now this kind of data is called discrete now first two are called variable variable means with that that in good numbers and the second one is called in the numbers first one and two are called variable they are all numbers even in numbers we have two kinds of so this one is called continuous the first one is continuous and second one is discrete it's called discrete a complete number now tell me what is the difference between 3 and 4 Third is the degree to, and fourth is different category. Yes, you are almost right. Okay, now let's understand. So, different situation, different kind of data. Is there a way to classify this data? So, now let us understand data types, different data types. Now, first data type, two types are called variable and attribute. Now, variable it is also called quantitative. We can quantify it. attribute it is qualitative now this qualitative will become a quantitative only when we say how many married person okay 30 married person then it will become a qualitative but when you write in fill up in a form that quality married widow etc then it's a attribute kind of thing okay now then in variable you have continuous and discrete you understood continuous and discrete now the second thing is nominal and ordinal this is called nominal and ordinal now what is the difference between nominal and ordinal in ordinal nominal is ordinal is also a same kind of uh, uh, data it's also a nominal data but in ordinal there is a uh, meaningful order for example when you say good average good better best so there is a meaningful order isn't it you know that good is better than average and uh, excellent is over than good above good isn't it now when you say your uh, education classification uh, qualification when you say uh, metric then plus 2 then you say uh, uh, graduation then post graduation there is a meaningful order isn't it we can say that Plus two is above metric, graduation is above plus two, and post graduation is above graduation, and PhD is above all. And you can also say, okay, the post graduation is uh, before uh, PhD, and the graduation is before uh, um, uh, post graduation, etc. There is a meaningful order. And similarly, if you are taking the hierarchy in an organization, like uh, uh, workman, then supervisor, then frontline man, line manager. then uh, general manager factory manager then uh, the operations vice president operations president operations then chairman ceo likewise there is a meaningful order but when you say married single widower can you say a meaningful order of course when married people will say i it is better to unmarry and married people say it will better to marry that but we can never say there is a one is better than other okay so there is no meaningful order we cannot say one is better than other for example you are doing chemical engineering now somebody is uh, doing industrial engineering now someone is uh, doing electrical engineering you can never say there is that one is better than other of course we say but that is not a meaningful order okay or if you are taking a four uh, all things like medical medical uh, science accounts history for 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 gamut everything is same everything is plus 2 or uh, graduation for for official purpose there is no difference all are same no meaning because all are graduates whether you are doing a ba or you are doing a btech you are a graduate that's all 
but sometimes somebody asks specifically for chemical engineering then you can that is different but when you say graduate all are graduates if you are in history graduate in history if you are in a graduate in uh, technology you are a graduate there is no meaningful order but when you say uh, graduation and post graduation there is a meaningful order so ordinal means there is a meaningful order and the nominal means where there is no meaningful order so these are the four kinds of data we are going to use now this is very very important this because all your all your analysis selection of tool depends upon this sometimes what happens your ctq will be continuous and your ctp will say attribute your ctq say a uh, ctq is a variable and ctp is an attribute then in that case what will happen you will select a tool called anova but suppose your ctq is an attribute and ctp is a uh, ctp is a, a variable then you will use a logistic regression we will learn it in later in a uh, analysis phase i'll just explain you what kind of situation it can happen just uh, in the last one week uh, i was doing a, a batch for the working professionals and there were doctors many people are there uh, you know so they were doing a project in that so uh, then we got a very interesting uh, data from one of the doctors uh, they were uh, they was doing a, for a blood contamination project related to blood contamination and you see what are the different types of data we got this is go what is going to happen when you take a real project now see this is called result in this result you see what are the kind of data here fast fast failed fast fast failed isn't it what is this data now you understood now what is this data is it variable or attribute 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 now in the attribute what is it nominal nominal or ordinal nominal 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 now this kind of data we call one more name binomial in binomial you have only two result failed pass failed pass so such kind of thing is known as binomial also now pick is also prick is also an attribute data now device by which they are taking vacutainer sorry so i don't know what is it called vacutainer vacutainer is it a vacutainer or a syringe now sterile again binomial yes or no now what is the g column number g what kind of data is that variable variable okay now in the variable what is it continuous or discrete discrete Okay, it seems to be a discrete, but it's not a discrete actually. Actually, it is. It is time, time in seconds. Okay, so if you take time in milliseconds, you will get in uh, fraction also. Time is a continuous variable. Okay, time can take a fraction value. Of course, we have not taken the because since it is in seconds, it is not taken in fraction value. But time is a continuous variable. Okay, it is contact time. So this is the only variable data we have. now how difficult is it to analyze we need to analyze what why why this result is because of uh, device because of break because of contact time because of antiseptic so this is the output now there are so many inputs person is one input skill is one input ctps person is a ctp skill is a ctp shift is a ctp antiseptic is a ctp contact time is a ctp sterile gloves is a ctp uh, device is a ctp prick is a ctp now we have all all attribute data and then in between we have one variable data it's very difficult to analyze when you get a variable data the most powerful data is variable data it's very easy to analyze there are a lot of tools that we can use for this analysis but when you get a attribute data it's very difficult to analyze okay 
So I have done just an example. What are the different types of data? Okay, what are the kinds of data you are going to face when you take a real project? Now, so these are the four kinds of data we are going to face in any type of projects. Yes, any doubt up to here? No, sir. Is it clear? Yes, we can proceed. Okay, thank you very much. See, I want such a response. Then only I'll come. To, uh, no, I understand. Thank you. Now let's proceed. Okay, now variable data. So variable data you understood? Like uh, there are two kinds of data, continuous and uh, continuous and discrete data. This also you understood? You can proceed. Then you also understood attribute data, like nominal, categorical, ordinal, which has a meaningful data. We can say it is a record of actual observation of a date of day-to-day -day activities. What is it? Data. Data. Okay. Now, what are the kinds of data? Data sources. Where do you get data? You can uh, take data by observation. If you don't have, if you have a fresh data, go and observe and take data. Then, if you don't have uh, data, you can do an experiment and collect data. You can have surveys, questionnaires, and the most free, easily available data, historical data in your com computers. When you go to a job, you can see there are a lot of data available, especially in the chemical engineering. Chemical engineering, a lot of data available will be available. Uh, then uh, in the manufacturing, uh, all these things, we have a lot of data available there in, uh, in companies. So these are all historical data. But if you want new data, you have to generate by survey, by experiment. It depends upon the project, which kind of project you are taking. Somebody may go for a PhD later. That time you will know that survey, you will collect data with the help of survey. And then when well, survey result will be analyzed in SPSS, not many time. And experiment design of experiment I will cover a little bit. It's not there much in your page, which will just a little bit will cover. Then we'll cover uh, observation. Okay, okay, right. Now, these are the data sources. Now, let us understand what is the information between the difference between data and information. Most organizations have a pile of data and facts about their operations. But when team began working on a project, they often find that the information they need is not available or data for that information is not being collected. Now, what is information and what is data? Please throw your ideas. Data you understood. It is collection of actual fact or observation. Isn't it? What is information then? Sir, so data is the facts available for something, while information is the conclusion from the data. Very correct. Very correct. We can say in different way. We can now say that it's an answer to the question. Information is something we, we need. Data is collection of field, facts. Information is answer to question. Or you can also say conclusion, whatever it may be. But your conclusion, you are doing some conclusion. First, you have a question in your mind that you have something to ask within that data. Okay. So information includes data, but data does not necessarily include information. This is the biggest problem with every man. We have that a lot of lot of data, but when you go, go when you're going for an information, you don't get that information from the data. Okay, so this is one thing. One more thing I wanted to tell you: the more you go at the top, the more information you need. When you want to take a decision, you need more information. So you are you are a you are a CEO of a company. Always think like that. Have a big thinking. Don't just think that oh, I'm going to get uh, something. No. So now itself, you just think. If a big, big thinking is that you are going to be CEO of a, the topmost uh, company. Otherwise, you can think even think like having your own industry that is competing with the current level, current, you uh, know, for most uh, topmost companies also. So you have to keep that vision always. So when you go top, you need more and more information. So you should, the biggest thing is you should be able to identify information, identify the pattern, 
and you should be able to ask the right questions see information is asked answer the questions asking the right questions for the information is most important let's take a small example for that okay data does not in, in, in necessarily include information now information needs how you generate a data you have questions for the information then you generate data and analyze and you get the information communicate that and then again it's a cycle of process information need okay and you want to that collect data you can this way also from opposite way also you can take okay now data collection process ensure that the data collected is not time or person dependent when you collect data please make sure that your data is genuine integrity and then precision and accuracy like precision and accuracy what we do we have done msa to find this precision and accuracy of the data okay and then uh, consistency and uh, then time traceability when you take a data it should be traceable with the time so these are all good for, for a good data collection process okay <clears throat> now we are going to start the basic statistics i think you all are aware about this statistics concept and you know, let us just for the purpose of statistics let's understand what are they now uh, we will understand the two branches of statistics understand the central tendencies and spread then we talk about descriptive statistics inferential statistics and conception of concept of variations now what is statistics statistics is a way of getting information see we talk about information now statistics is one way of getting information from a data uh, what is data you understood the data is actual observation and the, for example marks of 35 students in science in science in your class for example you are chemical engineering students the marks of uh, 50 students of or marks of the complete student in mrc iisc mrc okay mumbai region center now that is a data now data are useful only when we generate the information from it now information what is information information is answer to questions now what are the answers i can ask to this just for example 35 students now one question i can ask is how many students score below 50 percentage i can ask this isn't it now i'll ask how many students score above 90 percent now i can ask what is the trend of the past percentage for the last three years all are very easy okay now when i ask what percentage of students are expected to pass in the upcoming exam based on the three years trend now what is the difference between first three questions and last question hello so the first three the questions yeah hmm. uh, from the first three we can get info uh, like uh, the definite answers are but uh, okay okay absolutely. i'm not sure right right you're right you're right you're right absolutely first three questions we get definite answers isn't it from the data the cost answer is very straight way cost answer and there is no when you get an answer 100% answer you get like what you do you have 30 questions mark just see what is the percentage how many people scored below 50% suppose 35% if you say 15% scored below 50% or you can say 20 people scored below 50% it's a very clear answer from the data it's very easy how many students scored about 30 that is also very correct what is the trend of past percentage for last three years? Yes, that is also clear. I can get three years. But when you say what percentage of students are expected to pass in upcoming exam based on the three years trend, of course you get an answer. But will that answer be 100% right? No, sir. Like it's an assumption which we take. Yes, it's an assumption. It is an assumption. Now, when you assume something, you have a risk. Then you need to associate a chance. You have to tell, okay, there is a chance that 90% of people will pass. 
for example you know about exit poll after the elections the media conduct before the election also they conduct a survey they say yes there are chances that prime minister modi will come again 99% chance 95% chance and then they will say okay there's a chance of uh, getting the seat for nda this much getting seat for uh, upa this much they predict it and then they associate a chance they said okay this is a chance 90% chance that this will happen 95% chance that this will happen so these are called the exit polls and this everything happened based on a prediction and assumption and this can go you can see many of the people's assumption many uh, we can get different uh, different uh, exit poll something by abp news you can get a different ndtv news you can get asian news so many people will uh, do the survey and they will come the come out with a result with a different way and but after the election when the real thing comes then we will say that my chance my assumptions failed or not you will come to know only after that today if you want to decide something okay so first three so this is the two branches of with this you can understand the two branches of statistics so the two branches of statistics are so you understood meaningful information information from a data set can be obtained in two ways describing a data set just as put the data in a meaningful order first ascending order that itself will give you a first information like what is the lowest mark what is highest mark then you can get uh, the central tendency you can get a mean median mode etc then understanding the spread of the data range the standard deviation etc all these things are called describing the data and second set is called drawing conclusion so you are predicting the outcome versus based on a various pattern then probability of falling percentage of data between a range of values range of values that's why we say nda may get 340 to 350 they say 340 to 350 seats or maybe 280 to 300 seat likewise the range of values then testing assumptions or hypothesis all these things are called inferential science so the these method are two methods that separate branches of statistics called descriptive inferential now branches of statistics descriptive inferential in descriptive we are doing measure tendency tendency etc mean median mode etc but in uh, inferential statistics we are going to learn the different this probability when you have probability you have different probability distributions like binomial poisson etc okay so central tendency and spread mean is often the best measure for central tendency median is central the center of the data when there is no extreme values mode is rarely used central tendency then in measures spread we have standard deviation variation variance you know both are same so the standard deviation is nothing but square root of variation variance and range what is range you all know about the standard deviation no everybody knows it standard deviation what is range maximum minus minimum yes highest value minus lowest value okay so two method we can use for standard deviation now what is this branch of statistics which enables six sigma practitioners to describe characteristics of set of data descriptive statistics descriptive statistics okay now let us understand this now suppose we have a statistics example like you uh, know these are all very simple to you you already know everything but still let me cover it in a basic way so suppose we have 35 now by seeing this data you cannot you cannot no the, you cannot analyze anything it's all randomly placed so first thing is just to make it in a ascending order and if you want to make it a frequency now we we know that lowest mark is 30 highest mark is 90 very simple first first description 30 is lowest 40 is lowest now then we have a frequency description one person scored 30 marks two people scored 35 marks four people two people scored 40 marks like this now suppose if you want to make a frequency distribution row it 
So it will look like this. The 35 students marks and uh, how many people scored? One person scored. Now it is a frequency distribution. Now when you put at one place the X and other place the frequency, it becomes frequency distribution. When you put the marks at one place and the probability of getting the marks at the other Y axis, it is called probability distribution. So uh, if you take this like this, it gives a curves like if you have so many marks like this, you can make an histogram and you can predict the shape of the curve, etc. Now what is the central tendency? Now this is the central tendency. It is nothing but variation here. And then this is the variation. Now, please understand this curve because we are going to understand this for the process capability studies. This is central tendency and variation. Variation is, so the central tendency is measured by mean and variation is measured by how? Standard deviation. Standard deviation or variance or range. You are clear about it, okay? Now you know how to calculate a mean and standard, um, isn't it? You all know you have studied this in class 2 and um, uh, 10th you studied how to cal calculate the mean, how to calculate the variance, how to calculate the standard deviation. Clear? You know this, huh? Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, nowadays, see, if uh, you are learning, so you can do it. Otherwise, uh, working professionals, they don't get time to do all this calculation. Just put it in the Excel. The Excel will give you uh, the result, mean and standard deviation. Now, suppose you have five students. The mean is this. Uh, the IQ score, like 9600, so mean total is 600. The mean is 120. And then x minus x bar. Uh, Taking from each value, uh, you know, uh, you're subtracting the, the mean, and then you get this, and then square it, and then calculate the total of the square, so you can find out the mean and standard deviation. So this is the variance, this is the standard deviation. So this, the central tendency of this mark is 120, and the spread is 19.3. Now, this is how it, you are doing it in Minitab. Now, I never do it in Minitab. Whatever I want to do, I do it in Excel because all these steps so, and if you want to describe a data, it's very simple in Minitab. Okay. Now, I will tell you a better way of describing it. For example, in Minitab, Minitab will give you a, uh, no, uh, see, suppose if you want to make a data, uh, a normally distributed data, random data. Suppose you want to practice in Minitab and you don't have data. So you can ask Minitab to give a data. So if you go to Calc and uh, Rom, uh, let me show you that. I will do both. So if you, now I don't have any data. Now if I want to practice something, I go to random data. Now then normal, for example, I will take a normal distribution. A normal distribution can be explained with the help of two things, mean and standard deviation. We'll learn it. Now, I just asked Minitab, give me a one, 10 lakh data, 1,000 thousand data. And I will ask Minitab to store it in C1. Now, I will just tell, let me, you give me a data whose mean is 25 and standard deviation is 1.5. So many times I will put you, give you 1 million data. It's almost 10 lakh data here. Now, if I want to describe this data, very simple, go to mini tab, go to stat, basic statistics, and graphical summary. It will give you everything about this data, the graphical summary. All the descriptive measures will give you, put the, put the measure here, and then click OK. Now, Minita will give you a result. See this view output. Now, see, see this, how it is normally distributed. One, one million data, 10 lakh data, a histogram, how it looks like. And see here, mean, what is the mean? What is the standard deviation? What is the variance? What is the skewness? What is a uh, total number? Minimum, etc. OK? Now, if you put a one lakh data, you will get such a perfect normal bell curve of data. Okay, but all the time such data will not that such data you will not get. 
suppose if you ask Minitab to give a data for 100 data, same kind of data, 100 data, C. Random data, normal. Now, instead of 1000, I just ask 100 data. And the mean and standard deviation is same. Now, suppose if I make, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, in the Minitab, it does uh, first column itself. Instead of 1 million, I ask to put 100 data. So we get 100 data. Now you see, I'll go to stat, basic statistics, graphical summary. And if I do the graphical summary of this, you see the difference. See this. When you have 1, one million data, you got a perfect bell shape, isn't it? But when data is less, still this is normal. OK? See the bell curve. So, but when you have only 100 data, you will make a histogram, you know, like this. And this is a normally distributed data with the median here, mean here, what is the mean and median. See here. If you want to know the mean and median, see in Minitab, see mean is 24.906, standard deviation is 1.2, variance is this, minimum is this. Mat or first quartile, 25% of the data, where is it lying? Median data, what is median? Third quartile, what is the third quartile, etc. And what is the maximum value? So all those descriptive measures in one click, you get it in the data. With the shape also, graphical summary also. So when you get a data, you first do a descriptive statistic measure. How to describe your data set. That's the first thing. Understood? So this way you can describe set up that. So we were talking about the descriptive stats measures. Now it's almost one and a half hours. You want a five minutes break or you want a disc, uh, this, uh, discussion? Please let me know. Or if you want to continue, we can continue. Yes, sir. Break would be nice. Break. You want a break? Five minutes break? Yes, sir. So it's five. It's almost 5.30 now. Come back at 5.35 sharp. OK. So it's fine? OK. 5.35.
ओके ऑल ऑफ यू बैक ओके सो दिस इज वन वे ऑफ यू नो describing a set of data so description of set of data means mean standard deviation variation you can also describe with minimum maximum then first quartile median third quartile etc okay this is one way of describing it now then we'll go to the next things the basic statistics second one the population and sample parameter and statistic concept of variation etc now suppose uh we have a group of people say uh, around uh, 20 people in your department and you want to study uh the behavioral you uh, know what kind of personalities are there if you want to do a, a study you can at cac that you ask a questionnaire and distribute between this 20 people maybe in your own class that is easy isn't it now suppose you want to uh, do a study with uh, more people like for your department uh, maybe first complete first year student or second year student like that again easy now if you want to study the complete uh, college maybe little bit difficult but if you want to study the complete uh, you know college across india all iacs students of mrc all other things it becomes difficult when you get more and more people to study it's going to be difficult and if suppose you go if you say that you want to study the complete uh, behavior pattern of all the people in india studying 100 crore people now you can imagine when when the size increases how difficult it is how cost involved in this now there is a exercise called census now in the census they are doing it 100% it's a big year exercise so many enumerators will be involved every 10 years government do it without any fail every 10 years census happen this year also will is going to happen in april or something census so that is different 100% study but it's not always easy because it is a government organization government government can uh, you know detail people lot of uh, college uh, uh, lectures students everybody everybody will be Uh, involved in this maybe sometimes you may also become an enumerator um now for this uh, uh going in some survey you know can happen so that is a kind of activity to happen but if you want to conduct a study it's not easy okay so in that time this is called it's not is it possible to study 100% of the group always it's not easy so then what is the best way you take some representative samples from the group and then then study their behavior now this population is group of all item under study sample is um, now it's not only people it can be like for example the uh, number of uh, soaps uh, for example godrej consumer private limited i went there but they are of five years back for a training to that uh, you no know, operation managers a six in my training only so it's a you know they have lines and that uh, they have two 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 uh, soap manufacturing lines one is for sindol and uh, some other line okay now if they want to study the parameters of the complete soap of complete one year so that becomes a population but it's not easy to do at the percent so from that there you can take a representative samples like for example every morning every one hour they take sample of two two like that it depends upon the company to come how to study how to take samples from the population so population means it's not only human population it is anything under study okay it can be anything sample is set of data drawn from the population now when you take a sample it's sample one sample two sample three etc and then always better to study large number of small representative samples what does it mean always better to study large number of small representative samples can i use uh, is there any 
pen kind of thing in Google. In Zoom, it is there. Yes, I think white code is here. Where is it, white code? I'm not comfortable with this. I'll study and uh, next time. I, I just wanted to use a kind of pen kind of thing. Any idea, Manshu? If I want to mark something, is there any option to use a pen kind of thing in uh, Google? Yes, sir. Whiteboard, you can use it. Whiteboard. So, whiteboard when I open, but where, where is it? Whiteboard. See, it is asking me. Start, start a new whiteboard. Yes. Start a new whiteboard. Okay, then. Then send. Send. Yeah. But I didn't write anything in the whiteboard. Okay. Okay. This is the whiteboard. Eh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then we have pen here. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I am. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. But I cannot uh, take uh, show it in the slide itself, is it? Right, I cannot uh, write it. Can I write here? Uh, not as such, sir. Uh, because you are presenting okay, your own screen. Ah, OK. So but in Zoom, I used to uh, take Zoom classes. So in Zoom, I can make, uh, no, I can highlight it. So it's not possible here. No, okay, no problem. Not, not so possible. It is, uh, uh, always better to study large number of small representative samples. What does it mean? Now I have to go to whiteboard. Here is the whiteboard. Okay. Now suppose, uh, how to erase it? Clear. Now suppose I I have uh, I'm going to study 500 people. You know, uh, there, there's a population of about 1 lakh people, 100,000, uh, 100K, around 1 lakh people. Out of this five people, uh, 1 lakh people, I am going to study 500 people. Now, how many ways I can take this in sampling? I can take, I can group 100 people, 100 group of people, and I will take five such group of people. I can take this way. Second way is I can take 50 group of people and take 10 such 10 such group. In one group, 50 people. In one group, 100 people. And take 10 samples of 50 each. Now, I can also take uh, like 25 people into how much it comes then? 20, isn't it? 20. I take 25 people in a group and 20 such samples. I can also take five group of people, five people in a group, and 100 such group. Isn't it? Here I have taken 100 group of people and five such groups. So in one group, I have 100 people. Now here in one group, I have only five people and I have taken 100 samples, such samples. So it is said that this is the best way. Take small number of representative samples and more samples, such samples. Clear? This is what is, what, uh, what is meant by this line. Like always better to take. Uh, study always better to study large number of small representative samples. Small representative samples. Okay, right. Now then, now let us understand parameter and so what is parameter? Parameter is the descriptive statistic measure of mean, variance, and standard deviation in population. is known as parameter, and the descriptive statistics measure mean, variance, and standard deviation of sample is known as statistic. Please, this is not statistics. Statistics is the complete study, but when you say statistic, it means mean, median, mode of sample. Clear? So parameter is mentioned by mean of the pop population is mentioned by 
parameter, parameter mu, which is uh, you know, uh, represented by mu. Uh, for a sample, it is called x bar. Now, this is called sigma square. This is sigma standard deviation, whereas the sample, it is called s. Understood? Okay. Now, sampling, uh, how to collect sampling, different uh, strategies of sampling, random sampling, simple random sampling. You uh, take a like we asked many times to create a random data. So any kind of number. If you ask uh, Excel to create random number, you can create random number in Excel. Just go to one cell and tell random and then give a range by 20 to 80. If you want to make a random numbers between 20 to 80, give a random selection and then ask uh, Excel sheet to give a random uh, number. So random number is very simple. Random sampling. Randomly you are selecting. There is no, uh, no uh, they, they, when you say random, all samples have equal chance of being selected. Then stratified samples. Stratified samples means you can select samples from the machines, uh, production, shift, etc. That's called stratified sampling. Then you have judgment sampling, where sampling is based on one's own experience and opinion. Somebody will tell us, no, 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 do you take sample like this? Because he is an experienced person, he says, they take sample this way. And then we will study. So these are all different kinds of sample. Number of unit of sample is called sample size. Sample size. So now we understood the inferential statistics. Now we will see what is the inferential statistics. Now when you collect a sample, you will get a sample mean and standard deviation of the sample. Now always take small group like four, four, four people or four, four, four products, likewise four or five, and take mean and standard deviation. Then you have mean and standard deviation of uh, sample two, mean and standard deviation of sample three. Then you will have a total mean and standard deviation also. So the inferential statistics is nothing but taking the sample parameters and predicting about the whole population under study. So this is called population and sample okay now probability now what is probability because once you are predicting something so there is a chance it is not going to be 100 percent right today you take a decision you will come to know the result of that after after so many years especially when you are taking a big strategic decision today any company takes some decision today the result is going to come after two years three years and that is going to be a, you know, um, the effect of that decision will, will be there for at least five, six years or 10 years, something like that. Whatever a wrong decision taken, it will have a very long implication. Okay. So probability will help you to what is the chance of that decision. So probability theories help you to take top management to take decisions. Now, very simple. What is probability? Probability is chance. Suppose I say, what is the probability that uh, rain will come in the month of January? What do you say? What is the probability that in the month of January, we get rain? What is the chance? So very low, around 2 to 3 percent. Very good, 2 to 3 percent. Sometimes maybe 0 percent. Now, if I ask, what is the chance that in August, we get a rain in August? Almost full probability, hundred percent. Full probability, hundred percent. So this is the chance. So the chance may vary. So we we can have okay. This is there's a chance of winning. Chance of winning. Now if you say if I am tossing a coin, what is the chance that you get head and what is the chance you get a tail? One by two. One by two. Fifty fifty percent chance, isn't it? So chances just we express the chance in. So. Uh, conclusions cannot be 100% right, there is a risk and we say the probability. So we can say probably it may rain or probable chances of India and Sri Lanka winning the five series are equal. We say probable chance it indicates a degree of uncertainty. Statistical methods are largely based on probability theories and we draw conclusions based on probability distributions. Now what is probability distribution? You have frequency distribution. Instead of frequency, if you put uh, the probability, then you get a probability distribution.
So probability distribution is a table, formula, or graph that describes the values of variable or probability associated with these values. So there are two kinds of probability distribution: discrete probability distribution, and the discrete we have binomial and Poisson distribution. And the continuous probability distribution we have normal distribution. The normal distribution will cover now binomial, uh, Poisson, everything will be covered in the uh, green and black belt. In detail, it will be covered. So then we have concept of variation. Variation is law of nature. This is we understood that all repetitive activities have variation. Then uh, we learn variation in output is due to variation in inputs. So in the measure phase, we identify the CTPs to study its variation. So major source of variation can be categorized into six sense. As I said, man, machine, material, methods, measurements, and now. The Six Sigma, we want to ensure that there is no variation because of measurement in the first itself. Because all other things we cannot ensure, but the, the first, before we start, we should understand that there is no measurement variation because of measurements. That is why we are doing MSA. Understood? MSA, we do MSA because of this. Now, how these sources of variation can happen in the machine? The machine can vary in make, capability, age, servicing condition, etc. So you have two machines. One is a lathe machine, normal lathe machine, and you have another machine, which is a CNC machine. Now, whatever we are producing from a lathe machine, there it will have huge variation. But whatever we are producing in a CNC machine, the variation will be very less. Material. You have material like uh, raw material used and uh, production process, etc. And uh, men, men can vary with the uh, operator can vary in their skill, knowledge, experience, health, mood. Everything can happen, even in mood also. That is uh, that may create a. Uh, he had a fight with his uh, boss, or somebody had a fight with his girlfriend. Whatever it may be, it affects the productivity. It affects the entire production. It happens. Mother nature, we call it environment, mother nature, it's variation in temperature, light, humidity, etc. Now the methods, variation in methods or process parameter like process setting, work instruction, specification, etc. These are the ways it can the variation can happen. Now, the variation in data, variation in data represented by the voice of process, VOP. We heard about VOC. What is VOC? Voice of customers. Yes. So we have about VOC. VOC is nothing but CTQ. And then we have VOC voice in voice of process. It is nothing but COP. It's a CTQ. VOP and CTQ. Now, there are two types of variation. One is special cause variation, sporadic causes such as tool breakage, machine breakdown, spike absent, etc., skilled employees, etc. These are all special cause. Absence of special cause causes makes a process stable. You will learn it in control phase. You will learn it how it is controlled, you know, a process is stable or not. Then we'll also learn it what is special causes variation. Control chart is a tool to identify the special causes. Now, common causes variation. Inherent process product design problem, uh, work procedures, policies, etc. Aim of Six Sigma project is to remove the common cause variation. Now understand this. This is very, very important. To identify the causes of special cause, we use control chart. But if you want to remove the common cause variation, then we use Six Sigma projects. Common cause is something which is there in the design itself. <clears throat> So if you see the previous design, all the design, I don't know how many people may have you know, heard it, that uh, if you ask your parents or forefathers, they always know this. There is a scooter. There was a scooter called Chetan, Bajaj Chetan scooter. And just ask if your, uh, any you know, um, uh, people in your relatives, have you ever used that Bajaj Chetan, especially north side? You can come to know that. You know, this Bajaj Chetak scooter, if you want to start it, you have to tilt it. 
without tilting you cannot start it you have to tilt first then you kick then it starts otherwise you will keep on kicking it that was a kind of design that was a error it have but nobody had any complaint you know why because they have the solution they know that oh it's it's well, just till then start it just till then start it you can start it so nobody have faced any problem because once you tilt it was starting so this is an example of common cause common cause this is which is there an inherent design and nobody will notice it nobody will see it as a problem only a six sigma person a black belt or green belt people like you can identify yes there is an opportunity of improvement so then we will see and then we will start analyzing it understood so common cause can be removed by using a proper problem solving methodology and uh, special causes is like a fire fighting it comes and goes that is for only one or two days today the person skilled person was absent so i had a problem i had a river but tomorrow he came the problem solved so special causes are like this today tool breakage you repair the tool and fit it back machine break down you repair the machine and fit it back the problem solved but these kind of problems are not for six sigma problems six sigma we are looking for the chronic problems what are the problems that is regularly happening and unnoticed problem understood so these are the two kinds of variation causes of variation special and sperm, uh, common causes so we are interested in the problem solving is for the common causes here we don't require problem solving here we are going for it is just a fire fighting now three histogram now histogram this is steps of making histogram this is not uh, nowadays nobody do do it we just put it in any software and uh, you know check it so histogram is one tool to find out the variation analysis like uh, what is the shape of your data that is the help of histogram you know histogram is a frequency polygon like it's a frequency distribution in a group a group into classes now it looks like a bar graph isn't it it looks like a bar graph isn't it now tell me what is the difference between an histogram and a bar graph so histogram is for continuous data as opposed to bar graph yes then yes you are right now one more thing so it look like a bar graph isn't it now in bar there is no meaning for the width of the bar now but here there is a meaning the width of the bar it is a group of data right 50 to 52 there is eight kind of eight data so it's not necessary always a uh, continuous data it can be a discrete data also so 50 to 52 range there is eight people now 50 to 54 there are 23 items 50 to 56 there are 20 now in the bar graph there is no meaning of the there is no meaning of the width of the bar but in histogram there is a meaning when you say this this is actually calling that there is a range of data between this okay when you do a bar graph that width of bar has no meaning now how do you do an histogram it's again simple same histogram is done in the mini tab uh, this is histogram only so you can do it in one way graphical summary in mini tab otherwise you can go graph histogram and then put the graph and put the column and write it okay so it will get the histogram so same it's histogram is given okay so if you see the start this is a same same thing that's it so this is histogram now what is the use of histogram histogram will tell you the shape you will see the uh, you know 
uh, what is the shape of the uh, uh, graph sorry shape of the data distribution and then you can say whether it is a normal now this is a called a normal bell curve now you have to identify the patterns now this is the most desired bell shape of normal curve and almost all continuous data will be you know distributed in this way bell shape now there may be some other uh, double peak what is the um, uh, when you see a double peak histogram it means it is like the two process data is mixed there in one data itself you have two process data two different process so uh, shall i just uh, just do it just let us let us see uh, we will use it in the just i am not practicing it yet let's just do for a practice if it is coming like that now in the c1 you have one data of one particular thing now i will ask minita have to give one more data to me normal distribution and this time i will ask him to put it in c2 and now i will ask to put it as uh, uh, mean as uh, 65 and uh, standard deviation as 2 So many times, give me, give me an another set of data, isn't it? Now let's just for a let us see if it is getting a double peak. I'm not sure, but just let us see. Will it give a double peak or not? Now let's go to histograms, graph, histogram, uh, simple, and uh, this time we will see one. Okay. Have you seen this? you get a double peak data in histogram what does it mean double peak there is a process here there is a process here so when you get get a double peak it means there are two process data mixed okay see this it's a double peak you have a peak here you have a peak here so it's it's like uh, it's like this so how do i erase everything i cannot erase it once okay clear frame okay sorry it's there clear frame right now uh, suppose if you get it at a histogram like this it means two process data are mixed two different set of process data two different means are there means. so this is how it is so what what is that we have to see is we have to identify this now tell me uh, what is the example of a uh, left skewed left skewed means in left you have less people of the and then more people what is this example can you give an example suppose we have this session and if you see this session is to be started at 4 o'clock now if you take the draw a uh, histogram of people and uh, you know joining this session from 3:30 to 4 o'clock or maybe 3:45 to 4 o'clock you can see in 3:30 maybe one people join now in 345 maybe five six people join but by when you reach to 4 or 45 you can see more number of people joining so when you plot a graph for your number of people joining from uh, 330 to 4 o'clock you will get a graph like this okay now then basic statistics for now we'll see the normal distribution central limit theorem uh, standard normal distribution etc okay uh, is it okay so, uh, so far yes, any sir. doubt you want to ask okay. you are you are all are fresh 
we can proceed yes sir we can proceed yes now let's understand what is normal distribution then central limit theorem standard normal distribution etc mm -hmm. set score calculation not in much the detail because uh, only for the yellow belt level i so normal probability distribution this is a probability distribution okay when we plot all the data of population we get certain pattern like bell shaped double peak right skewed etc when we get a bell shaped curve we call it as a normal distribution normal distribution of data has certain characteristics these characteristics are useful to analyze the process under study so the normal distribution can be described completely by knowing only two things what are those mean and variance very good mean and standard deviation okay see i asked minita to give me a that give me a uh, random data of normally distributed data see this i am going to delete Now suppose I asked me data, calc random data, normal distribution. You can see this. When I ask the normal distribution, I want some normal distribution and the data which is normally distributed. And me data will ask ask you which column which column you want to store it. <coughs> Then next thing me data is asking is, what is the mean that you desire and what is the standard deviation? So that what does it mean? if if you know the mean and standard deviation of the uh, normal distribution normal distribution can be described by knowing the mean and standard deviation of that similarly every distribution will have a certain thing every distribution will have certain thing that you need to give to give me mean that or you need to know it like for example binomial distribution poisson and binomial distribution in binomial distribution you need to know two things one is number of trials and then you need to have uh, what is a non probability let me see if binomial is there so in the normal distribution we need to be asking this so a distribution normally distributed then we can describe it with the help of mean and standard deviation now what are the things you need to describe a uh, binomial distribution let me see binomial is here or not negative binomial binomial c when you ask binomial what is if you want under data of binomially distributed you will say so many time will ask you what is the number of trials and what is the non non probability suppose if you are having a number of trial 10 and then the probability is 0.12 then if you put it c it gives a value like this okay distributed normally distributed and if you if you plot a binomial uh, histogram of this let's see this now that if you describe this let's see how it is described graphical summary c1 say this how it is distributed binomial distribution c it's a kind of right skewed what is the shape of this data most of the data comes in this and then it is a right skewed so it's a kind of binomial distribution okay so if the depending upon the type of data the depending upon the probability distribution you can now like if you need a poisson distribution then if poisson distribution it will be described with the help of mean so it depends what are the what is your distribution so now a normal distribution can be described with the help of uh, mean and standard deviation now suppose i just wanted to know from you uh, yes yes now we have three process process a b and c its mean is 50 and its uh, standard deviation 7 4 and 1 how does this looks like 
Now tell me which is the best process here? C. 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 Why? The standard no deviation. No standard is deviation. Yes, standard deviation is less. So less are the standard deviation. Now, see if uh, how this graph looks like. Any idea how this distribution looks like? So let us see how it looks like. Now, this mean is 50 for all process. Now, what is process A? Process A, C, it's standard deviation is more. So, standard deviation is more means spread is more. Now, C, process B, it is better than process A because it has lesser standard deviation than process A. Now, what about the process C? Process C looks like this. If you have a process with the same same mean and different standard deviation, it looks like this. Now, suppose you have a process standard deviation same and mean different. Now, you have standard deviation same, but mean different. How does it look like? So, the width of, width of the curves will be seen, but uh, they will be situated on the different position yes, of the axis. Yes, yes, yes. You remember that shooter C, shooter C, isn't it? Shooter C was good. Only thing that is mean was shifted. So it will look like this. This is our desired, but it was, it was like shooter C. This was where our center is, but shooter C was here. It is easy to bring him back because your standard deviation is same. All three. This can we say which process is better? Tell me which process is better here. Any guess? So any any process can be better depending on the desired result. Very good. Very good. So you understood. If you know the same mean and the standard deviation is different, you can you can tell. This is what I said in the first example of shooter example. Okay, this is like shooter example. Now, the process was good. Only thing it was shifted. Okay, so here you are right. You told right because any process can be better. It depends upon the situation. What is that situation we are discussing? And so it looks like this. If the mean is different and standard deviation is same, the process will look like this. Now, as I said, normal distribution has many properties, which plays an important role in Six Sigma projects. But when we plot a graph, or uh, is it necessary that always we get a shaped or curve in this normal distribution? Not necessary. So shape can be double peak, right skewed, etc. For example, suppose suppose I plot a, I got a population distribution of like this. This can be one distribution. I got like this. Then I got a distribution like this. Then I got a distribution like this. Anything can happen in that normal distribution, isn't it? But it's not necessary that I always get this because this is the most desired, desired probability and distribution, most desired. But sometimes you get like this also. Sometimes you get like this also. There are many distributions, any distribution can happen. So how will you use the properties of normal distribution when you want to, you don't have a normal distribution? So that time, there is a technique called central limit theorem. So central limit theorem helps you in this. So central limit theorem says that irrespective of the shape of the population distribution and the sample size of, size of the sample, the mean of the sample schemes will be equal to population mean. And so the distribution of the means of sample will approach to normal distribution as the sample size increases. This is called central limit theorem. So instead of plotting a individual graph, you take suppose you have nearly 30 consisting of 3 to 4. Individual reading and plot the graph of their means. Then you get this. Like for example, 
if population distribution is like this and if you take a sample of nsgl2 and make this sample large number of sample and plot it like this so you get something like this but when you make the sample size more than nsgl25 you get almost normal when you have a sample size more than 25 you get like this a normal distribution like this okay so the what is the normal distribution then the mean of the sample distribution is known as sam sample of means x double bar standard deviation of sample mean are called as standard error it's nothing but sigma x bar is equal to it is sigma divided by square root of n when is the popular number and we we'll, uh, it's not for the yellow belt it's for the black belt mode so we'll discuss everything in black belt detail characteristics of this distribution is bell shape single peak and having two tails extending is infinitely and never touching the horizontal lines this distribution is called as normal distribution normal distribution bell shape well shaped means normal distribution the properties of normal distribution let us see make most of the isgram was follow the bell shape or normal distribution normal distribution has some properties which can be used to make the prediction so that is not non normal can sometimes be transferred to normal instance to use these properties so what are the properties of distribution first thing the curve doesn't test zero that's the first thing the curve can be divided into half with equal set of values following either side the peak of the curve curve represents the center of the process area under the curve represents 100% of the product output of the process capital of produce so we are going to find the area under this curve that is 100% curve and then normal distribution can be defined by determining two factor that is mean and standard deviation these are the properties now there is another property called suppose you know that uh, population is distributed uh, with a, a standard mean and standard deviation now you can take that suppose another important pro property is that if you have a distribution like this you have a mean and then you have a standard deviation called sigma so you can classify this into mean plus 1 sigma mean plus 2 sigma mean plus 3 sigma similarly here mean minus 1 sigma mean minus 2 sigma mean minus 3 sigma so suppose 1 plus 6 sigma the area under this curve is 65 percentage 68 percentage 68 percentage that means if you have a distribution like this and you know what is mean and standard deviation so you know that 68 percentage of the product or process falls between this range of values continuous data means it is a range of values so you know 68 percent of the data falls between that 68 of percentage of the product measurement falls between this range and then 95 percentage of the product range measurement falls in this range plus to minus plus minus 2 sigma 99.73 percentage of the products falls between the plus minus and three sigma measurements suppose the capture transaction process is normally distributed with mean is equal to 50 mm standard deviation is equal to 2 mm a random sample of 1000 shafts are selected how many percentage of shafts are expected to fall between 48 to 52 mm what is this 48 to 52 mm it's nothing but mean plus minus 1 sigma isn't it is it it is the uh, the this population was distributed in mean as 50 and standard deviation as 2 now suppose what is the range of values between mean plus minus this is mean this is mean this is standard deviation now mean plus minus one standard deviation what is this mean is 
plus minus 1 into what is the standard deviation 2? So, what is the range of value? It's 48 to 52. So, when you say 48 to 52, it is nothing but mean plus minus 1 sigma. Now, how much percentage of data falls in this range? This is measurement. 68. 68. Now, what is 46 to 54? This is nothing but mean plus minus 2 sigma. Mean is 50 plus minus 2 sigma, it is 46 to 50 percent. Now, how many percentage is supposed to be there? 95 percent, 95 percentage of the Sharpe's measurement ranges between 46 to 54 mm. Let's see. See, 48 plus 52 means plus minus 1 sigma. 46 plus 52 means plus minus. So, you know that 68 percentage of the Sharpe's manufacturers, Sharpe's measurement will fall between 48 to 52. Now, if you have 1,000 Sharpe's, that means 68%, uh, that means 680, 680 Sharpe's diameter will fall between the range of 48 to 52. Just see. That means 682 uh, sharks, um, uh, um, sharp screws, whatever it may be, are expected to fall under the dimension of 48 to 52 mm. Clear? So this is the property of standard normal distribution. Normal distribution. So you understood this? So, okay. 68%, 95%, 97%. Now it's okay. But the problem is, it is easy 48 to 52 percent, but I don't want in 48 to 52 percent. But I want that what percentage of the product falls between the measurement 46.5 to 51.5. And in that case, what will I do? How can I predict? Can you predict it? So we can do it. That is called yes by linking this distribution with a standard normal distribution. Any normal distribution can be converted into a not standard normal distribution. A standard normal distribution is one something which is called mean is equal to 50, 0, mean is 0, and standard deviation 1. Suppose I am going to close this mini tag. Now, I am just opening the mini tab again. If I ask mini tab to give me a random distribution of uh, normally, this random numbers of normally distributed uh, data, see this. That, uh, data. Suppose I ask mini tab, give me a randomly, this random data normally distributed. Now, see this. I asked 100. I asked uh, suppose uh, C1, store in C1. Now see, mini tab by default says it mean 0 and standard deviation 1. You know what is this? It is mini tab by default is going to give you a standard normal distribution. A standard normal distribution is a distribution whose mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1. Okay? So, cancel. So, standard is, yes. We can predict it by linking it with a standard normal distribution. Okay. So I know there is a disturbance in sound from my side. I am helpless for that. Okay. Right. 68% okay, sir. Okay. What is a standard normal distribution? How do I link my normal distribution with standard distribution? Standard distribution is a normal distribution with mean is equal to 0, standard division is equal to 1. We link any normal distribution to standard normal distribution with the help of z-score. So if you know the z-score, z-score is nothing but the individual minus value minus mean divided by sigma. Suppose if I want to know what is the z-score for value 48, what is the z score for what is 38? 
48 minus 50 divided by 2 is the standard deviation, that means minus 1. So this is the calculation. Z minus X. Z is equal to X minus mu divided by sigma. Suppose C. This is a standard normal distribution. Okay. Now one sigma and okay. Now suppose 68 percent. Know that this is covered. Now how will you compare it with the standard normal distribution? You can compare it with the Z value. So if you want to convert a normally distributed table into a standard normally distributed table, you can convert it to with the use of Z score. Okay. Now you know how to find out the Z score. Then what is the Z value of 46.5? So Z value for 46.5 is Z is equal to 46.5 minus 50 divided by 2. That means minus 1.75. So this is the corresponding Z value for 46.5. And then what is the Z value for 51.5? It is 51.5 minus 50 divided by 2, that means 70.75. So if you are able to find out the area between this, between 1.75 and 1.75, you will be able to predict it. Now suppose, now, this is normal distribution. Now, area under this curve is 100%. So, if you know which area you want to know, suppose you want to know this, you want to find out the area between this. If you want to know what is the area between this, how will you find out? The total is 100%. But I want to know what percent of this, because you know, plus minus 1 sigma, it is 68% of the area is 68%, plus minus 1 sigma. It is 68%. Plus minus 2 sigma, you know, it is 95%. This is not. But what is this? How will you find out an area in between? Suppose you want to find the area between this. So you find it with the set value. Set value will give you from the set table. If you know the set value, you go to set table and then you can find out the area between it. Now, before that, let me tell you one more thing. If you want to find out the area between this, between this and this. Now, the way is, way for this is, find out first the area between this. From here to here. You find out this area first. This is the area you have to find out. Then, you find out the second area. Up to here. Now you can subtract this area to this, then you will get this area. Am I clear or not? Is it clear? Yes, now sir. this area, where do you get? You get from the set point. Let us consume this set, 1.75, Z75. And here, this is Z minus 1.75. Because 46.5. 46.5, what is it? 46.5, if you want to find out the corresponding Z value, mean is 50 and uh, uh, standard deviation is 2. So you will give 46.5 minus 50 divided by 2. That is equal to minus 1.75. So if you get the value for minus 1.75, this area, and then you get the area for one, set is equal to 7.5. You can subtract both. Okay. That is what is here, one year. Okay. Now see, 
these are the two different areas now if you want to find out this area you find out this area okay so see now you want to find out the area between this so area between this is first you will find out the area up to this z 0.75 and then you will subtract the area between 1.75 now, what is the area between set value? Now, if you know the set table, see, in all the probability distribution, you are going to have some certain value. If you are going to do F distribution, you are going to have certain F value and go to that F table and find out the area under that curve. If you are using a chi-square distribution, you will have a chi-square value, then take that chi-square value and find out the area between that uh, from that chi-square table. Similarly, if you want to find the area between the normal curve, you go find out the Z value and go to the Z table and find the area between it. See, it's very simple. You can do it in Excel also. I'll tell you that. Now, if you have a student T distribution, you will take a T value and go to a student T table and then find out the area under this curve. These are the ways using the probability distribution prediction. But nowadays, everything is easy with the Excel and Minitab, etc. Now, what you will do, you will find out the set. How will you find out the area between the set? This go to a set table. Now, you want to find out the value for points and five. This is how a set table looks like. Now, you have to go to point seven first. Where is a point seven? Here is a point seven. Now, then you will go to point zero five. Then see this here here that means what is the area between this this is 0. 0.2734 and the same thing you will get in excel this is 0. 0.2734 2734 no now let's do the same thing in excel and what is that value this is for 51.5 uh, or 41.5 this is for 51.5 okay take an excel Open the Excel sheet and then if you write it, like uh, take a cell and write t is equal to, then this is a normal distribution, just write norm dist, norm dist. I will click on this, norm dist, and norm dist means you should know, uh, you should know the mean and standard deviation and the value what you want to find. Now, value that what you want to find is 51.5. This is the area under the, this line you want to find. Now, mean, what is the mean in this example? 50. Now, standard deviation, 2. Okay, now comes a column, very tricky, and this is uh, this is where people always make mistake. Whether cumulative is true or false. Cumulative true or false means, say, now, if you find the area here, this is only one place. If you want to find the cumulative, cumulative means from 0 to up to here, you have to add all the areas, then only you will get it. So you have to write cumulative as true. Then you just that. Okay. Now, why here it got 0 0.273? Because this is not cumulative. Okay. So cumulatively, if you if I write 0 0.27 as false. Let me see this as false. Let me see if I have not made any mistake. Okay, so this is supposed to be uh, we have this is supposed to there is some change in this. You can see this is the actual value. You can get it in the Excel sheet. This value, okay, 51.5 and uh, the standard deviation is 50 and false. You get this value if you take it as true you get this value okay this is the value what is this now let's see so this is the value for one point set is equal to that means 51.5 if a normally distributed plot with mean is equal to 50 and standard deviation is equal to 2. So area under that curve up to 51.5 is, area under this curve is, what is it? See, 
77.33, that means C. This curve is 77.33. This is the percentage. Okay. Now, what you will do? You want to find the other area of 41.5, isn't it? 46.5. Now, we see it on this. Then you write uh, 46.5, comma, 50, comma, 2, comma, true. What is the value you got? You got 0 0.04. That means this value, the other value, till 46.5, it is 0 0.04. That means 4 percentage. Now, if you minus this from this, you get the value between, falling between these two. Clear? This is how it is done. I'll see. Similarly, 1.75. There may be some mistake what I've done in this. Uh, maybe the values and all. Okay. Some calculation mistake might be there. Otherwise, Excel is the right one. We'll follow with this. Please check it with the, your asset table also. Are you getting the same thing? So the uh, you get a, uh, see, 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 here I have written the right one. 73.33% are expected to be within the, the diameter. OK? OK, 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 OK. Right, right. Now I understood what is C. This is not a set cumulative table. OK. It has taken from me to here. That's why it is C. This table is not a cumulative table. You have two types of set tables. Cumulative set tables are from the uh, second half of the table. Okay? So that is why it happened. Otherwise, uh, that mistake should not happen like this. So there are two types of Z table if you want to select, and you can do it. So here they have taken at here they have taken the see two different ranges. See, I have, we have two different ways, no? Like uh, see. Two ways. Either, either you take the, you want to find out the area between this. Okay. So well, first thing I said, we have one way. Like take total here and then minus one here. Now other thing is, you have another way. You find out from center to this, you find out the percentage from center to this first. You have this one, and then you find out from center to here how many ways. Then add both this, add this and this. Okay, that is why it has come like this. So answer is safe. If you, what is the answer? Seventy-three point three three percentage of sharps are expected to fall within the diameter of 44, 46.5 to fifty-one point five. See, if you, if you minus this from this is equal to this minus this. What is the answer? 73.33. So we get the answer same here. Same answer we got. If you have taken this value, z value as cumulative table value, then we will get the same Excel sheet answer there. But whether you take this cumulative or not, you are going to get the answer as same. So in Excel also, we got 73.33 percentage. See here. In Excel also, we got this, 73.33. 0 0.733, that means 73.33 percentage. So 73.33 percentage of the product is expected to fall between the diameter range of 46.5 to 46.5 to 51.5. Clear? So these are the use of standard normal distribution. Now, there are two types of set tables, normal set table and cumulative set table. Minitab uses this method. Even Excel also uses this method, cumulative table. So that is why we got this in Excel. So what I was finding is a normal set table, OK? So cumulative set tables gives the area between particular set value. In cumulative method, in order to find area between two set values, if you want to find z1 minus z2, so this is what I explained you. You find this first. And then you find this first. Then you get this value. So most of the time, the calculations are done in this cumulative set. Okay. So.
So this is same. We have so same thing can we can get it from mini tab, but uh, no need to go for mini tab like this. It's Excel is easy. Okay. Now process capability study. I will start in our next lecture. <clears throat> this is enough for today. Otherwise, it will be too much. Is it okay so far? Yes, sir. Everything is clear. Clear. Any doubt? We can discuss. If you have everything clear, we can break up also. But I want. I don't want to start the process capability today. I will be studying starting it on that day. Yes. Any any doubt? Please ask. So far.